guys, Kristen here. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the Riverdale book tag. The Riverdale book tag was originally created by Cats and Cameras, and then I came across it on the channel Kate's Book Date. I will leave links to both channels in the description section below. If you don't know what Riverdale is, it is a TV show on the CW, and it's very popular. It's loosely based on the old Archie comics, and it's got a lot of small town high school drama, and mysteries, and murder, and it's a really good show, and a really good guilty pleasure. Before we get started with the tag, if you have not subscribed to my channel yet, go ahead and do that. And at the end of the video, if you enjoyed it, give me a like, or leave me a comment to let me know. Okay, so let's get started with the tag. Number one is Archie, a book with great side characters. Even though Archie is the main character in Riverdale, so I have questions about this first prompt, but anyway, I went with the A Court of Thorns and Roses series by Sarah J. Mass. This series has such a great cast of characters. If you love the characters, you really, really love them, and if you hate the characters, you love to hate them. I'm looking at you, Tamlin. And in every book in the series, you gain new characters and you get so attached to them, you kind of forget they weren't in the previous books. My favorite character is definitely Roseanne. That's kind of like a given, but I'd say my second favorite character is Lucian. Number two is Jughead, my personal favorite character on the show. I know he's like everyone's favorite character. I love Jughead. I love Jughead so much. Anyways, number two, Jughead, a character from a broken home. For this one, I'm going with Nate from One of Us is Lying. Nate is the stereotype typical bad boy character from One of Us is Lying and at first I felt like he was gonna be really one-dimensional and then he just really grew on me. His father is an unreliable alcoholic and his mother is really not in the picture and so Nate has kind of grown up taking care of himself. Number three is Veronica, a character who very easily could have been one-dimensional and it's true she could have been the one-dimensional pretty popular girl and they just did such a good job with fleshing out the Veronica character. For this one I went with Mare from the Red Queen series. I like that Mare isn't the perfect protagonist. Mare is messy and imperfect and occasionally she's even unlikable but that's kind of my favorite thing about this series. All right, number four on the tag is for Betty. Another character who could have been one-dimensional and is actually very deep and complicated, by the way. But for Betty, it's a great sibling relationship. And for this one, I went with Molly and Cassie from The Upside of Unrequited. In this book, Molly and Cassie are fraternal twins. They look very different from each other, but they have a very close friendship. And their friendship and sisterhood is tested when Cassie falls in love for the first time and becomes obsessed with her new girlfriend. Molly feels very left out, and she's also dealing with a lot of other stuff that's going on. And I liked how much both of the girls' characters kind of grew and they ended up kind of growing closer through all of this. Number five in the tag is Cheryl. This is for a character who acts tough but is secretly an emotional wreck and that's totally fitting for Cheryl. She acts like such a queen bee but she is a mess. <laughs> for this one I went with Warner from the Shatter Me series because how could you not? By the way, it, you might have never seen this cover before <laughs> if you just got into the series recently but this is the original cover from the first Shatter Me book in the Shatter me series. Warner could have been just a regular old villain in the Shatter Me series, but Tahara Mafi said no. He's just so intricate and complicated and guarded and such a beautiful disaster that I totally fell in love with him. And he has a whole lot of emotional stuff going on behind the scenes. Number six is Josie and the Pussycats, and this one is a strong, marginalized female who is more than just her stereotype. For this one, I went with... Shahrzad from The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Ahtia. Shahrzad is of Middle Eastern descent and the book takes place in like a fantasy Persian desert setting. She has this plan to survive this evil ruler who murders his lovers in the night. And she goes into the situation, totally balls out, like, I'm gonna survive, I am not gonna die tonight, period, end of story. Well, actually, that was the beginning of the story, but okay. And she is extremely fierce in this book, like Beyonce fierce. Number seven is Polly, a character who gets locked up emotionally, physically, mentally, etc. For this one, I went with physically. I chose Cress from the Lunar Chronicle series. When Cress's book starts, she's imprisoned in a satellite in outer space, and her job is to do hacking for Queen Levana. I also really liked how Marissa Meyer applied the Rapunzel story to space by making Cress locked up in a satellite in outer space. Like, that was a really creative version of being locked away in the high tower. Number eight is for Kevin, a character who's a member of the LGBTQIA community. For this one, I went with Monty from A Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue by Mackenzie Lee. In this book, Monty is romantically interested in both men and women, 
but I like how the book doesn't focus on defining his sexuality as much as it focuses on his unrequited feelings for his best friend Percy. Percy has never shown a romantic interest in men or Monty, thus the underlying plot for the entire story. If you haven't read this book yet, you definitely should because it was my favorite read of 2017. Number nine is Jason, a character's death that broke your heart or made you cheer Finally, and just in case you're wondering, that's not a spoiler, that death takes place in the very first episode of the show. For this one, I'm going with an unnamed character from Never Nights. I'm gonna keep this spoiler free if you have not read this book, so don't worry. So there's a character who dies unexpectedly at the end of Never Night, and I was like, what? So shocked, to the point where I was like, how do we go forward with book two? I thought this character was very important to the story. How do we go on from here? I wouldn't say that my heart was exactly broken because I wasn't super in love with the character, but I was just so shocked by the whole event. Number 10 is Riverdale, which is the city that the show is set in. For this one, you're supposed to pick a world building win. For this one, I picked the world of the Raven Cycle series. I am so in love with this world. I just finished Blue Lily Lily Blue, which is the third book in the series, and I adored it so much. It was my favorite in the series. The Southern Gothic feel of the town of Henrietta, and the magical ley line that runs below it, the magic of caves water. Like what even is caves water? It's the kind of world building where you don't realize it's happening to you because it's very subtle, but when you finish the book, you find yourself just really thinking about that world. And number 11 is a wild card. For this one, you get to pick a prompt to add to the tag. So I'm going with the Archie comic. Pick a favorite book or series that is a retelling or reimagining. I thought since Riverdale is based on the old Archie comics, that this would be a good wild card pick. But if you do this tag, you can either use my wild card pick or you can create your own prompt for the tag. For this one, I chose Heartless by Marissa Meyer. Heartless is a loose reimagining of the Alice in Wonderland world and tells the origin story of the Queen of Hearts. I experienced a huge role Roller coaster <laughs> reading this book. I was already a big fan of the Lunar Chronicles series, but when I started Heartless, it just didn't click with me right away, and I actually set it aside for a little while. But when I went back and finished it, I really enjoyed the whimsical feel of the world and all the little connections to the original Wonderland. My heart was totally broken by this book, by the way, like ripped out and smashed to pieces, and yet I still recommend it. Actually, I probably recommend it because of that. So that's it. That's the end of the Riverdale book tag. I'm not going to tag anyone specific, but if you're interested, in doing this tag then I tag you and if you do this tag make sure you come back and leave me a link in the comment section below so that I can watch your video and see what you chose for your wild card pick as always thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon with a new video bye How could you be so hard?